Well, the various uh, courses and activities are, in a sense, only a start. Uh, you need to attract people to come to the CC or to the Residence Committee Centre. So you, you, you have a starting program, so you target, for example, uh, something that is uh, more suitable for senior citizens. Uh, the question is what happens when they come for that program? Let's say they come for line dancing and it seem, seems to attract uh, a particular group of people who, who like line dancing. So the question is what, how is the line dancing conducted and in, in fact after the line dancing um, do you encourage the formation of interest groups? Because one of the things you want to do is to first get that you know, the group of people to, to get to know one another and to bond. That in itself is very good. Um, then when they are already in an active interest group who comes to the CC or the RC frequently, then there are other things which, uh, uh, you know, other programs which can be done, which then um, can uh, create more opportunities for interaction. I mean, I can give you an analogy. Um, of course, all an analogies are, are not perfect. Um, you might be attracted to go to a supermarket to buy a particular item. But as you walk around, you may see other items, right? And you, you buy other items. So in a way, you, you come in for one activity or one program. Then you might find that there are other activities or programs that interest you. I mean, the two aspects, uh, one is, is the nature of the program itself, whether, whether the, the, it is structured in such a way that you build community spirit. The other way is uh, once the people are there, are there ways of getting them involved in other things? Um, I mean, there are, there are various kinds of community events um, that are organised by the CCs, for example, throughout the year. Uh, some of them may, I mean, a, a major one would be like the National Day celebrations. So if, if it's a senior citizens group or a youth group or um, a particular sports activity group, you know, um, when it comes to the National Day celebrations, there are opportunities to get them integrated and mix with other, other groups. Sometimes you can get different groups together to organise different activities uh, or, or, or maybe even organise the, the celebrations in itself. So in that process, you create more opportunities for people to mix and you mix across race, language, religion, age and so on and so forth. See? So the idea is you, you must have something to attract people to come in. And, and uh, in a sense, uh, um, you know, if, you, if you work out your, uh, the, the passion card system and so on and so forth well, you know where your gaps are, um, which are the groups of people you're not attracting enough of. Then you find ways and means what would interest them to come. And when they come after they've had that experience, try to give them more experiences which you know, gives them this, again, this opportunity of interaction across uh, different social uh, spectrum. You know. Now, uh, let me explain a little bit why uh, there's some commercial activity at, at the, at the centres. Uh, I believe, unless they've changed it, uh, the CC can let out up to 25%, I think, of its floor area for commercial users. But the kind of commercial users that uh, are allowed, uh, you know, are in a way linked to uh, meeting community type needs. For example, we would not let out the space to uh, a renovation contractor because that's not quite uh, the right thing to do. So it's let out to some food outlet sometimes. I think some of the CCs may still have Starbucks or KFC or McDonald's there. Um, then there are things like, uh, I think, childcare centres, uh, ballet, uh, Ballet depends. Sometimes it's to a studio, sometimes it's not. It's just different uh, teachers teach uh, you know, at different um, time, time, time slots. Um, this is partly necessary because from the, rent, the rentals are, uh, offer the CC some a stream of income, 
a stream of revenue, which then enables them to subsidize you know, when they run other activities. So this is, this is why first it's allowed. But care is taken, as I said, to make sure that the activities are not uh, incompatible with community activities. I mean, food outlets, you know, when you come to a place, you're always looking for something. You, you need, need something, in here. you need a drink, you need some place to, to have something to eat, so that's all right. Um, there's the need for childcare centres, for example. And uh, we find that these activities, even like the childcare centre, uh, it's not bad because uh, when you bring a child, you send the child there, the parents are also there. So that presents opportunities for the community staff to, to draw the parents' uh, attention, and, and not only the children, but the parents' attention to other activities and, and, and that are available at the CC. You see. So it is not, uh, um, not a commercial kind of thing per se. Huh? I mean, we wouldn't uh, let it out to a boutique or, or you know, things like that. But things that are relevant and presents opportunities for, for it. And it's good you, you, because many people don't understand that uh, the CCs actually raise, need to raise a lot of money because they are involved in many, and many of the programs they organize are subsidized because we want to be able to, to, be, to attract uh, a wide cross-section of people. If it's not sub subsidized and things are run on a purely commercial basis, then you know you are, uh, you lose out on on uh, bringing the people from the uh, lower end of the uh, the, the socio economic stratum. Um, so, you know, money it, it supplements the, 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 the money that uh, the, the, in, that they need to run the, the CCs. In fact, the, the most most of the uh, CCs uh, raise uh, quite a lot of money. They have to have to raise quite a lot of money every year because you want to keep costs uh, affordable to all. Huh? Oh yes, 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 yes they are. I mean, the, the courses are again a means to an end. You know, you bring people there um, because the, the participants, for example, get to meet uh, a cross-section of, of uh, of, of, of people uh, and, and also the families and, and, and the parents and so on. Um, so so it, it's, a, it's a legitimate you know, uh, count. I mean, you come for Pilates classes or yoga classes and nowadays even for belly dancing, you know. Um, it, it's, it's all part of, of, uh, of, of uh, that community engagement. Because what, what we try to do actually beyond when, when all these courses and so on are uh, organized is to uh, promote you know, self-sustaining as far as possible interest groups that go beyond the course. After the course, you make a lot of friends. So you continue doing various things uh, together. And that's what we want to do. And better still if, it, if it's you know, across the... Uh, various uh, socio-economic uh, dimensions. I don't know what it, it really is today, but uh, I think it, it, will, it shifts from time to time. There will be some evergreen things. Uh, uh, and also it depends on the location. In some locations, uh, depending on the, you know, the dynamics of the people, living there, certain things are far more popular than elsewhere. I mean, maybe uh, another sort of a analogy I would make is that if you uh, are running um, a Watson's or, or something, uh, or, or a retail outlet, 7-Eleven, if you're located in a, an HDB area, I think the range of goods you carry will be slightly different from the range of goods you carry if you're located near a private housing estate. So it will vary. Yeah. And the challenge of the staff is always to, to know um, what's new, you know, or what, 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 uh, what your local clientele uh, uh, would like to have.
Yes, yes, yes. I mean, that's just one of the reasons why in the CCMCs, for example, uh, during my time, I tried to ensure that the residence committee members uh, and uh, the neighborhood committee members are also uh, you know, cross-represented in the C CC management committees. So they bring with them you know, the, uh, ideas of what their residents would like or would prefer. And, and also, uh, so in, in some senses, uh, avoid duplication, unnecessary duplication. Sometimes duplication is good, no? but uh, you avoid unnecessary uh, duplication in the programs and activities that you offer. I think uh, uh, this, uh, you know, it's, an inter it's, it's interactive. Huh? You've got the uh, uh, management company members, and I think the, the, the physical surroundings are important because I think safety, security, cleanliness, these, these are the basics that you've got to make sure are there. Otherwise, uh, if you have a rundown place and it's unsafe, uh, uh, I mean, things are not well maintained, I, I think that's, that's, that's a problem. Um, but again, it's, it's, uh, uh, there are other ways, uh, uh, I mean, apart from involving the, the, other, the other committees. Uh, um, one of the things which I had hoped to do, or I, I, I started doing when I was in PA, was uh, when you collect data and stats from different uh, CCs, and you can uh, start comparing, you know. Uh, so the idea is to expose them, uh, you know, a group of people to what others have done, and this way you widen this, you know, you 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 you, you widen their vision, they widen their horizons, so they see what else is possible. Because sometimes you may have uh, people may have a certain view about, you know, what's doable, what is not. And sometimes it's coloured by their own personal experience. Um, the environment is changing. Maybe they, they have not it's not caught up with them yet. But if you look across and say, hey, you know, the, the other guy managed to do it. How come? So the idea is to of this comparison is not to pressure people into performing, but to really open their eyes and say that well, there are other ways and, and there are ways of doing it, and there are other things that can be done. Um, maybe we should learn how others have done it and maybe we should do it as well so it's it you know it's, it's the positive side of comparison positive side of competition as it were uh, of course if you're not careful then the competition becomes uh, uh, you know too much of a pressure too much you know it can be problematic but here this is where the staff and you know, uh, management and all that could get together and and sort of balance things out so things don't go to an extreme I think fundamentally, you know, we should never take uh, 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 national unity, you know, uh, the racial harmony and all that that we have today for granted. I mean, for various reasons. I mean, the world is changing very quickly. There are a lot of external pressures. Um, we're exposed to social media um, and... Uh, uh, so there always, you know, there's always pressure for change and so on, which is fine. Um, but must not take things for granted because, uh, also because we have a new generation of people. Uh, two two basic di dimensions. I mean, younger generations come in. We've also brought uh, allowed in uh, a lot of new immigrants who may have a, they've had a different history. I mean, the young people also, because you haven't had the history of the, if you say, the pre-65 generation, for example, you know. So these are things which uh, we have to be careful of. Um, and um, that's why one of the things I, I you know, I'm quite, quite uh, uh, adamant about is that, um, particularly in the public sector, you must realize that there are succeeding generations. You must realize that you must be able to, to, to um, 
expose the new generation to what happened in the past. I mean, today, you know, we always look in the future. Every six months, you get a new iPad or a new iPhone. And you look at things like that. But sometimes you forget about the past. And I think good to understand the past. And for government agencies, huh, I think it's good to, to uh, uh, communicate from time to time what your basic operating tenets are. I mean, for example, uh, our healthcare policy in Singapore, why do we say co-payment? We don't say everything's for free. Why is it the government says we are not, uh, we don't want to promote first dollar insurance, you know, it's comprehensive insurance. Why we promote a kind of insurance where you still need to pay a certain amount before you, you know, because there's a fundamental reason behind it that without co-payments, everything's for free, Every, there'll be over demand and uh, an unending escalation of uh, costs. So there is a reason for all this. Why do we have, for example, an HDB? Why do we have an ethnic uh, a racial distribution policy? So the background to it, you know, there are enclaves. Historically, colonial times, I suppose it was convenient for the colonial powers to divide and rule. And, and also at that time, there was no sense of nation. So if you allow too much of enclaves to continue, uh, the, the problems uh, of, of uh, isolation and you know, separate, separateness comes. Whereas what we want to do is while we recognize that uh, we come, we, you know, historically we have different origins, different language, different religion, but we want to recognize that we want to have uh, as much common interest and, and you know, a uh, common destiny, you see. So some of these things need to be explained because I think succeeding generations may not know this. Um, and uh, the, the newcomers also would not know this. So some of the basic, you know, why do we do what we do uh, needs to be reiterated. I think interestingly, you know, um, I don't know, you know, some people say this indoctrination, you know. But I don't think indoctrination is, an, is, a, is, a, is a necessarily a bad word. You know? um, and in a sense, you know, the, the, the religious people have got it, done it very well. I mean, a good example, I think, is the, the uh, Catholic Church. Uh, they get married in church. Uh, when a child is born, they're baptized in church. When a child is... Uh, you know, still quite young, but able to communicate and so on, you go for catechism classes, so you understand certain things. Then you reach a point, you are confirmed. And after confirmation, there are regular communions. So there is a an, an continuous passing of, uh, you know, what are the values and what are the, you know, what are the key, key, key uh, points. So some of these rituals and so on, you know, are, are valuable. Which is why, for example, I, 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 one of the things I did, which some people thought was crazy, was I insisted that on, on say, National Day dinners and so on, uh, we don't just stand up and, and listen to the national anthem. I said, sing the national anthem. Because the problem with us is once we leave school, we never sing the national anthem anymore. Isn't that true? Isn't that right? See? Something wrong. And, and in a way, I, I, you know, tongue in cheek, I blame MCI, you see. Because MCI issues you a, a, a CD, I think, both with the very loud music and very loud voices. So all the, the, the voices and music so loud, well, why sing, you see? I think they should issue a karaoke version, you see. <laughs> Just the music, not too loud, and then people must sing. So in, 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 when, during my term in PA, I just said that during National Day, and maybe key events, I get the MC not to say, you know, ladies and gentlemen, rise for the national anthem, but ladies and gentlemen, let us sing our national anthem. And I think, you see, so some of these things you must remember and you must keep on doing. Uh, and say the pledge. After a while in school, you forget, hey, what, what's the pledge? Can you remember the pledge? <laughs> see? Huh? So, so these are things, sometimes some of these r rituals and so on, you know, are important. 
I don't know whether you know whether I, I could be wrong. Young people may say all oh, these are rituals and all that, you know, you know, meaningless. But think about it. This is what it's like your culture, your you know, your values and so on. If consistent, carry on. And it's it's important what sense of national unity. <laughs> so I mean the other thing is I I I, I I push very hard for analytics because I think you should understand where you are. Uh, I mean, that's why I, st I started the Passion Car in 2005. The idea, one of the ideas was trying to understand what is my penetration, what are gaps, you know? You, you know? And then when you understand your gaps, then you can begin to target. I don't think it's possible to get everybody and consistently, you know, or, or rather everybody every time, you know? But I think if you look at it and see what your penetration and your, 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 the gaps are, then you can do something about, you can ask yourself, do you want to fill the gap? And then what does it take to fill the gap? To my mind, a good thing is you have a good cross-representation of your catchment area uh, involved in your activities. Because you will give them that, that the experience which maybe other organisations don't give, um, you know, uh, about this, this need to have a common experience, widen your common space and realise that we are in the same boat, we got to work together, you see. Rather than being separate and then uh, each one going your own way and if it's a threat to the nation, uh, you know, those who can escape, escape. You know, those who are left behind, get left behind. It, it cannot be like that. Nah. We, that is not not, you know, a national a harmony, unity, that's not what it is. So, mind your gap <laughs> and try to, to, to address those gaps. Um, and, I mean, reiterate, you know, what are your basic operating tenets in this country? You know, and, and, and so that people understand it, um, and, and when you understand it, then you won't uh, won't do crazy things and, and, and you know and, and uh, uh, do things that that uh, create disharmony, disunity. I think there's still a need to engage them. Um, um, again, you know, for them to understand the boundaries, uh, what it is that uh, they ought or not ought to do. I mean, what I mean about boundaries, for example, don't bring their own political problems from their home countries here. I mean, this is something which uh, uh, Singapore is very clear about. Even now, when they are talking about uh, uh, upcoming Malaysian elections, the police has recently, you know. Made, made this point that you know we don't want to have political rallies here, supporting one side or the other because it's other people's politics and don't use that you fuel up you know uh, unnecessary uh, uh, tensions. You see? So, I mean, our foreign workers coming from elsewhere may have their own, you know. Um, right, so don't don't import unnecessary violence and and trouble. Um, but they still need to be engaged and, and you know, uh, we welcome them. In fact, uh, not only the migrant workers, I, I'm, I'll talk about the expat community. That's one of the reasons why uh, for Chinge, you know, you see that uh, it's still essentially an Asian parade. I think two-thirds or more of the programming is Asian, Singaporean, you know, but there's some international as well because, look, Singapore is a cosmopolitan city and we are connected to the world and, and the expats here and all that to a certain extent, you know, ought to feel at home here as well and, and they also have some responsibility and, uh, 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 you know, to exercise some responsibility when they're here. So we engage them. So obviously, so, you know, you can see uh, some foreign, foreign component um, not just, uh, sometimes we have visiting exotic groups, uh, but that, that's not it. But sometimes the local ones, uh, you know, like the Tangling Trust, the American School, uh, we get them involved. 
because they are here, you know, as a community, they are here. The Japanese Association is a big, a big supporter. So get them involved. And, and it's good also for our locals to interact with, uh, with foreigners, you know. I mean, not everyone, those who are better off, you know, you, you get to travel, you get to, you know, you, different, but some, some of the more, more uh, the local people uh, may not have this opportunity. So during the parade too, it's, it's not the parade itself, you know, it's the training, the rehearsals, you know, there's quite a lot of interaction. It's quite, quite interesting and, and there's a lot of value in that.